How does scoliosis affect the person? Scoliosis is a spinal condition that causes the development of unnatural, unhealthy, sideways bending curvature that also twists. And the twist is into the concavity of the scoliosis. Being diagnosed with scoliosis means being diagnosed with, unfortunately, a progressive condition that it's very nature to worsen over time. This unnatural curvature will typically become larger, and as it becomes larger, the condition effects become more and more noticeable. Scoliosis ranges widely in severity from mild scoliosis to moderate scoliosis, even to severe and very severe. And the condition's severity is determined by a patient's Cobb angle. The higher the Cobb angle, the more tilted the spine is and the more the spine is curved. And we know also that as the Cobb angle increases, the rotation or the twist also increases, so the rotation in the cavity, concavity also gets larger. Now, when we look at causation, we always don't know what causes scoliosis to progress initially or develop initially. And this is because the majority of cases are diagnosed with something called idiopathic scoliosis. But even in this vast majority of cases that are idiopathic, which is 80 plus percent of cases of scoliosis, we do know what tends to make scoliosis worse. And for children, we know scoliosis worsens because of growth. And the progression tends to be rapid progression that occurs in adolescents who are in the stages of puberty when they have rapid growth, they potentially can have unpredictable rapid progression. Now in adult cases, progression is very, very different, which we'll talk about in a second. Now the main symptom when it comes to scoliosis in children is gonna be postural and visual changes. Even though scoliosis can progress relatively to significant numbers and to very severe stages in children, scoliosis normally doesn't cause pain or symptoms associated with development. They don't feel discomfort. They don't expect your child to come to you, hey, my back hurts, and that's why you're gonna find you have scoliosis. Typically, it's gonna be something you see visually, uneven hips, uneven shoulders, uneven shoulder blades, development of a rib arch, uneven waistline, arms that hang at different lengths to the body, Body, even different uh, spacing between the arms. And it's normally going to be something visual that you see with the shape of their torso, the posture of their body. Remember with children, there's never a normal reason to have asymmetrical posture. What makes this problem even worse, since it's happening during puberty, these are when kids are going through physical changes and they're normally kind of wearing bigger clothing and kind of covering themselves more. So normally you're not seeing them, you know, you know, like they were like little kids, like they give them baths and showers and you don't see them. So therefore you're not seeing their bodies as often. And therefore these curves can progress in very short time during this pubescent growth spurt, and it can go unnoticed by the parents. And understanding that most kids are only having pediatric physicals once per year. In one year, a lot of growth can happen and a lot of development can happen in the scoliosis if it's a progressive scoliosis. Some other symptoms can include changes to balance, coordination, and gait, but it's normally postural and very unlikely it leads to pain or discomfort. Now, unfortunately, in the adult form, scoliosis becomes a compressive condition, meaning what worsens the scoliosis beyond skeletal maturity when growth is completely done is going to be compression of gravity over time. And since compression causes the curve to slowly increase, this causes scoliosis to start causing pain and discomfort. Now, unfortunately, this, this pro progression is not linear. It may start off really slow in the young adult stage. What I mean by slow, it could be just maybe one degree or half a degree a year. And it normally leads to dull, kind of achy, kind of symptoms in the adult stage. Normally it's not a lot and patients can do lots of things to try to make themselves feel better. But this compression and over time leads to an acceleration. And these acceleration of this progression causes the pain to tend to worsen. And the typical onset of this acceleration is somewhere between 40 and 50 years of age, we see the curve start to progress quicker and leading to more discomfort and more pain. Now, adults can also experience postural changes and the postural changes tend to be really a lot of leaning, leaning to one side, leaning to the other side, pain that radiates into the legs or into the arms to the nerve compression. And this is what typically brings on a diagnosis. But in both cases, in the adolescent stage and the adult stage, 
the, the as curves get bigger, they're more likely to get bigger. So the best way to minimize progression and to minimize symptoms is to understand that scoliosis is a progressive condition. And how you respond to knowing that you have a progressive condition is really gonna determine where you're gonna end up. A progressive condition means that the symptoms or the problem will worsen over time. And the more severe the curve gets, the more the posture gets involved, the more painful it becomes as an adult, and the more problems it tends to cause. So therefore, making, uh, choosing not to treat your scoliosis in early stages is where curves can become more severe and cause more problems. When you treat scoliosis in a more mild form, we know that the, the likelihood of preventing progression, preventing these symptoms, becomes much more likely. In most cases, working towards prevention and working towards stopping a curve from progressing, working towards stopping the increased symptoms and effectiveness of a severe scoliosis is much more effective and, and established for patients to get better than trying to respond after curves have worsened to severe standards. Now, unfortunately, because most patients are advised not to do anything about their scoliosis, the majority of patients I do treat have already worsened and we're trying to re reverse their numbers and bring their curves back down into smaller and try to improve the effects that the scoliosis is causing. But I'd much rather treat curves in the smaller form than in the severe form. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.